how we do it. Oh no, you getting to know you. He's embarrassed. Getting to know all about you. Welcome, Ron. (laughs) Getting to like you (laughs) and getting to hope you like me. He's saying it to a brother. (laughs) Haven't you noticed? Brothers need some love. Suddenly we're all bright and breezy because of all the. Wonderful and new <laughs> things we're learning about you day by day. Yeah, Ron Spears, Hello. welcome. Yeah, in the house. I'm telling you right the now. The brother, I'm, here. I'm telling you right now. Man, I'm trying to give you love greetings up at Pack Stereo. I can't get this on. I think I like support, little. but I'm not singing to no brother. I'm, I'm, I say to you, <laughs> I'm comfortable in my manhood. <laughs> Shit, I know y'all need some love, even because we're old. <laughs> old man, shit. I'm sorry. But apologize. Better, better than see, nothing, isn't apologize, it? Apologize. Way better dude. than nothing. <laughs> okay, good. It's about time. Okay, now on a serious tip, Mario. Come on. Well, you know, this man is a wonderful man. First of all, he has a spirit of his own that makes you want to laugh. Yeah. I told Ronald when he came in, and, you know, it's funny, I went outside, put the sign on the door. We put a sign on the door that tells him. This is where the bra, you know, because people, they don't know. They, right. they, where the hell? <laughs> so we put that, I went out, and, and he was just pulling up, so he obviously recognized me because he had the window. Mario! <laughs> I said, Ronald! <laughs> I ain't never met. I ain't never met. But some things are like that. What I love about what we do is the way it allows us to connect to people in ways that you never imagined and in ways that seem so close. It reminds you. That there's something out there. Yes, sir. There's something out there that's metaphysical in this world that brings these things. And somehow we find each other. And this is an example. I don't really know how Ronald found us. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> but I, I want to, I wanna, but I'm so glad he did. Let me tell you a little bit about him. He's had a journey. We're going to let him tell the story. I'll just give you the overview. He had a journey that really involved a lot of health issues and really found himself in a position where he really wasn't expected to survive. True. Now, and to d- so many people today uh, dealing with these kinds of issues, you know, it's funny, our capacity to keep you alive is one thing, and the capacity to heal is somewhat different from that. So, and many times the medical establishment just run, sort of runs out yep. of things to, to do for you. So... Ronald had an issue where he was near death, and then he sort of he found something that ended up helping him. Yes, sir. And here he is today. I'm so glad to say, 110 pounds lighter. Hmm. Man, 110. Wow. And that's we some of the people I dated. Yeah, I know. 110, 110 pounds. <laughs> yeah. 110 pounds. Everybody, our guest. Yes, sir. Health survival. Ronald yeah. Spears. Yeah. Everybody. Welcome. Let me make sure your mic is up. Yeah, definitely. So, Ronald, how you doing? I'm doing fine. And welcome to Pack Stereo, my brother. Thank you. Can I ask you first of all, how did you? How did we come together today, Victor? You feel if you need to chime in any of this? Oh no, or, he's a better because storyteller. You guys, than let me I tell am. you guys too. We do this show. Of, I even told Ronald, I said it's funny. We like to experience things with you. We don't have a history of doing these kinds of things, so it was nope. our experiment. And we found that by experiencing certain things with you, that it has a different impact. Right. So, Victor, he gives me the amount of prep that he feels is, you know, relative. Right. And then, because the whole thing is to have me experience you, too. That's right. And respond that. So, so I did. So, he just was introducing some. I knew it was a a big journey in terms of your health. So, you got to tell me, how how did I come to meet you, even though it feels like I know you? Well, you, well, I started on this journey um, back in 2008. Um, I had a case of um, stratus leg ulcers. And what that is, that's when your heart is not strong enough to um, pump fluid um, through your body evenly. You know, it would, like, you know, the gravity pulls your fluid down and your heart pumps it back up, you know, back and forth. So my heart was so weak that fluid would just sit in my legs. So what happens, your leg starts to swell. Wow. And what happens, your skin can only takes so much of that before the fluids start to come out. And it causes these incredible sores on your legs. And um, it's, uh, 
it's, it's really strange is that um, I was over at my brother's house one day, and uh, he decided, he looked at my leg. He was drinking his water, and uh, he kept telling me, "Oh, this this water can help you with your legs." All doing all the time, I was actually going to a doctor, and they was treating on my treating my legs. Um, actually, here in Los Angeles, and then um, in Orange County, but they couldn't really stop the the, the skin from deteriorating. But they gave me antibiotics, didn't work. So it got to the point where they was making a decision to amputate both legs. Wow. So my brother kept telling me about the water. So one day I went over to his house, and he just dashed some water on my legs. I mean, I'm thinking, like, why would this guy put water on my legs? You know, what's going on? But when I went to my return visit to my, um, to my doctor, the one that was taking care of my skin and everything, he, just, he looked at it and went like, wow, I mean, your legs are really healing, kind of, it's, it's real strange because the antibiotics that we have you on don't really work that fast. And the time that, that, you know, in between the visits. And I started thinking that, well, maybe it is something with this water. And all, all the while, I was, the doctors at the hospital was deciding to, since my legs were so bad, my heart was so weak, they just decided pretty much to go ahead and put me on hospice. Now, hospice, for those of you who don't know, hospice care is what they put on people who consider terminal. Who are going to die, it's usually reserved for people who you're giving up on medical therapy for the most part, and it's all about making you comfortable as you prepare to meet your maker. So, wow, yeah. even for that, mentally and emotionally, Ronald, that had to be. Yeah, it was, it was uh, very emotional. I just couldn't believe that um, I only had six months to live. I mean, I mean, you, everybody go through their everyday life, and um, you know they they see this and do that. But was, just to have that kind of thing hanging over your head, that every day you're counting. You know, I have six months. Every day I'm looking at one less day I'm gonna live, one less day I'm gonna live. Uh, it was just it was unbelievable. And I got three kids. You know, um, I got a son that's 14, a daughter that's 10, and another son that's 12. And I just couldn't, exp how can I, I couldn't explain to them that their daddy wouldn't be here. To even see him graduate or move on to the next grade. Uh, it, was, uh, it was unbelievable. You know, I, I don't want to cry because I get really emotional when I talk no, about this. But, um, you know, my bro back to my brother. He kept telling me, you know, try this water, drink this water, do all this stuff. So I started drinking the water. And what happened, my hospice nurse, could they assign you a nurse to come to your house? pretty much to take care of you. They have doctors come in and all kind of different uh, chaplains to help you. Sure. Make sure your soul or whatever is, is okay for leaving. And um, when my nurse would come, I wouldn't be there. <laughs> you know, the, she was like, wow, what's going on? You, I mean, were, you were getting out at that point. Right, or something. I'm, now, <laughs> now, I'm drinking the water. You know, I'm constantly drinking this water, a lot okay. of water. Okay. Because I started to feel this energy and, and what happened, the water was building oxygen in my blood. It was starting to give me the oxygen I need to help me with the congestive heart failure that was causing the leg sores and, and just the weakness and the whole deal. And um, so my nurse would come and I wouldn't be there. She would call me on, on, a, on from my cell phone like, Ron, where are you? You're supposed to be in the bed. <laughs> you know, and she just couldn't believe it. So I tried to explain to her that. I don't know what's going on. I'm feeling better. You know, I, I, uh, I don't know. I couldn't explain. It's really hard to explain because I didn't know all the details about what was going on with the water in my body and all the, and the doctor stuff and all the medications. But um, now I do. I know exactly what actually happened that took me off my deathbed. Because you were, now, you were... And I want the audience to understand, at this point in time, what was your daily life consisting of before the water? Were you, were you, you said you were in the bed a lot. Yeah, correct? I was in the bed to the point where I was getting sores. So you were actually spending most of your time. Yeah, I was in the bed. I couldn't pretty walk. Pretty much in the I was, bed. I was in the bed. I couldn't walk. I'm getting bed sores, uh, oxygen 24-7. It was um, really. Congestive heart failure. A lot of folks out there have to deal with someone who has something like this. You know, as the heart starts to fail as a pump, like Ronald said, right. the fluid backs up right. into your legs and ultimately for many folks into their lungs. Right. Right? 
And, and, and those of us who have diabetes, as I do, or, or folks who have relatives who have diabetes, we know that this whole issue of perfusion in your extremities already for those who have diabetes, see, because it affects your little blood vessels. Yeah. So, again, people get so they have, that's in these, in these continued chronic states of sores, and, they, and the doctors tell you the antibiotics don't really get in because the antibiotics are coming into your bloodstream. And guess what? If you don't have blood flow right. in there, the antibiotics don't really get in. Yeah. You know, so he, it's, it's amazing. And so you started, so here you are, because I'm imagining you in this whole life. I'm told six months to live, hospice, pretty much bedridden. It's hard to keep your head right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. You know, hard. This is where you need spirituality. You need family and friends, mm. and so then you come upon this product, and you start to drink this water, right? And you start to feel better, correct? And then you have the family around you <laughs> who've been watching you in the bed. And remember, people. Some people don't realize that when you have these kind of situations, this it affects the family all day. It's not just one person; it's the people who love that person, who there with them all the time. Everybody's stressing and hurting and loving this person. Right. So, man, so Ronald, what, what was so what started going through your mind as you started to feel a little bit better? Well, I mean, well, just well, you know, I want to say this here too, and a lot of people that know medical situations. My ejection fraction, which is the strength that my heart pumps blood back and forth and oxygen, was 10%. I was about to say, you ready to go. Wow. Yes, yeah, nothing. That, mm. that means your heart, wow. it's like you need a that's pump. Not even. It's just not getting the blood mm, out. No. It's just not getting the blood out. So, yeah. And they usually, when you have stuff like that, the medicine, you can't pound that horse. You know, some medicines, you know, the heart's a muscle. Yeah. So you try to give it medications that'll pound it, make it. Work, but you know, some of these horses get to be the old horse now. <laughs> he, yeah, he, come on, <laughs> you're right. It does 10%. You can walk from here to the bathroom or something, right? Or something like that. Well, actually, here. I couldn't walk anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, no, it, yeah. I couldn't walk yeah, you're anywhere. Yeah, you out of breath if you get up and just no, get in the no. chair. I had oxygen every yeah. time I would go somewhere, I had to bring a little tank with me, um, yeah. for oxygen. And um, so the doctors pretty much. I mean, you look at the medical side of it, there's no way a person with a heart rate that low when the normal is 60%. You know, no one has any expectations for you at no, that point. No, no one the, has. No. The medical establishment has no, no expectations no. for you to to deal. Right. Yeah. To survive. To right? survive. And, and that's uh, four years ago. Mm. So tell me now, what happened now in the beginning? So you start drinking the water. Right, I started drinking the water. What did it start going through your head at first? Because, you know, like on the third day or something. Like, where were you going? I mean. Well, I started feeling normal. <laughs> I started feeling normal. You know? like, I couldn't understand why would the doctors put me on a six months to live program. And I'm starting to feel okay. Right. So it got to the point where the hospice nurse, doctors, and, and staff would like, wait a minute, uh, we don't know what's going on. I mean, why would the hospital sign this guy over to our <laughs> program and um, he's, you know, it's, he's starting to heal like this. You wow. know, it was just really remarkable. But uh, um, like I was saying, you know, I, I, I did a lot of research on the water and I want to really share it with the world because there is another way. There is a way. Hmm. Well, tell us about this because this is fascinating. Now, you know, we explore everything here. There's a, we we and we always have acknowledged. There's a lot that modern medicine doesn't know about. A lot of holistic therapies. I personally have advocated some of the therapies of Edgar Casey, considered the father of holistic medicine. Uh, so we know that the medicine that they don't know about a lot of things. They certainly, in the past, knew nothing about the, like for example, the impact of the human mind. Right. You know, thinking that you're going to die mm. has an adverse effect on your health. Mm. That's one of the things about dealing with people who have these kind of illnesses, Ronald. You know, the key, if, if you, it's so hard to keep your head right, and getting depressed makes you die faster. Mm. So, so tell us about the water. Where did the water come from? What is the water? It's called Congen water. It's... Um 
alkaline, high alkaline based water. Okay. Um, and and it actually the water was was the, pretty much developed back in Japan. The um, the company that that um, that provides the water started out um, 37 years ago. Okay. But it just uh, actually the, the technology just moved to Los Angeles. I think 2000 and. Um, Three or two thousand and four, actually moved to the United States, started in Los Angeles, uh, and what it is is just alkaline water, and it's um, called it's ionized water. What the what the Japanese was able to do is split the water atoms pretty much, where they can split the acidic part of the water and the alkaline part. So one each one side of the the, um, the, the machine gives you alkaline water, the other side gives you acidic water. Okay, it splits it. Okay. That's the way God intended it to be. Hmm. So you, you actually you go back and look through the, the Bible, whatever, you can see that God actually split the water. He hmm. separated it. And the, the human body knows the right stuff that it needs to, to maintain and keep it going. Wow. And that's pretty much um, what happened with the water. Well, I found some information on it just that fast. Was there a particular supplier that you used of your water, like a particular brand? Because I'm seeing that if you guys do a Google search, and, <coughs> excuse me, Ronald, you can see, too, what yes, I'm looking yes. at. Uh, I just did a basic Google search, and there's a bunch of information about this. First of all, there's a bunch of, and there's a number of companies, but there's only one who has the registered trademark of it. But Because uh, I guess there's some other people who make it, but it's a machine. Right electrolysis machine kind of that's used and uh you use it and so you create you prepare your water yourself daily or when you yeah, drink it yeah yeah out the, get out the machine daily how did your brother why okay why did your brother have the water <laughs> well, my, my, my brother's a DJ and he, he met, that has a lot of money. That a, <laughs> see that's what I'm saying he's a wonderful <laughs> go, go on Ronald I'm sorry Ronald but that's my, so my, wonderful my, yeah my brother's a DJ and uh, he was in the club and he met this guy and he invited him to the like they have presentations that he's in the club Ronald you know this okay this is, this is still an interesting story he's out in the club right he was in the club like, you know Partner DJing, doing right. his DJ exactly. thing, right. and he meets somebody. Right, right. <laughs> this is wonderful. Okay, and the guy talks to him about the well, water. Yeah, he told him about the water. Won't he come with him on, uh, I think it was a uh, Wednesday night, and just see a presentation about the water and how the water actually helps, you know, the body heal itself. Okay. So my brother thought the guy, he didn't know what was going on. He didn't know the guy. So basically he wrote the license plate number. Just in case if he go with the guy and never come back, at least he have some kind of evidence that what's going on. Right. But he went to the to the presentation and he seen the people with testimonies similar to mine, see I mean, saying what the water did for them. So pretty much that he you know that was implanted into his um, brain. Once my situation came up, he, so he, but he bought the machine at that point no, well, in time. No my, no, my brother didn't buy the machine at that time. Huh. Uh, uh, what happened? I bought the mama machine first. Well, how did he? He just how did he had some of the water that he that because, someone because they share it. Wow, the water is free. Like I started to bring some. <laughs> the water is free. You know, you share the water. You, you you know, if you have a machine, you share it with your family, with your friends. Let them try it out, and if they like it. Now you know, wait a minute, you guys notice the consciousness involved. I'm sorry, I had to, that because that that means a lot to me too. So the, in terms of even the consciousness, here you are as the person afflicted by the illness. Mm -hmm. And so as part of your consciousness, you're sharing your, your healing right. with other folks around you, too, just to help them, too. Right. That's, that already has a certain kind of an energy to right. it, Ronald. So you share it with your family and yeah. friends. Yeah, I share it with my family and friends and, and strangers. <laughs> and strangers. No, no, really, if I, I tell somebody about it and if they want to, you know, I see something wrong or they have a family member with high blood pressure or certain issues that I'm familiar with, I tell them about the water. Well, they, in the chat room, Mama B, Brandy <laughs> Flores, oh, yeah. already chiming in. She that's what I drink. <laughs> so she drinks the water. And she's talking about, she says she has the machine. So the chat room, 
There's already some folks following behind your testimony. And you know, Mario Hibsley checking it out. <laughs> I am checking it out. Oh, yeah, I know where you're and going. And taking a look at that. But that is a wonderful thing. So now, let me ask you. So after your brother exposed it to you, then you went to the seminar, uh, I guess. Or what did no, you actually, do? No, I was still pretty much dealing with hospice. <laughs> okay. <'cause that's> right, <laughs> cause, you, know, you just started to drink the water. Yeah, right. I was starting to drink right. the water. And um, I seen the, the, the benefits. And the doctor seen it. They couldn't explain it. What did they start to Because, you know, explain. doctors, that's why I drink a lot of the teas I drink today. Yep. From people that I ran into. Definitely. Referral. So you learn. Doctors who are Referral, open learn. Man. They learn because they say, well, there's the book, but you cannot ignore your own eyes. I don't care. Yeah. Here's the book. But these are my eyes, okay? Right. Yeah. And I trust them even more than the book. Okay. Yeah. Well, so the uh, doctors had to be. The doctors was, um, they couldn't, they didn't know what was going on. Wow. Um I don't know if they knew about you know alkaline water, what it can do to health benefits, but um, I can tell you it's not part of traditional medicine, and in general, <laughs> the whole issue of either of of affecting the pH of water in terms of a health care treatment is right. not is pretty much not, ignored. Sure is because because they don't it, it it doesn't work when they attempt to, to do it the way they do it. You know, women have heard about this drink. You know, cranberry juice when you get a urinary tract infection. Mm -hmm. See, the medical establishment doesn't really go along with those things because they haven't seen actually that you actually do it. Do it. You know, study, when, they, when you go study. take their urine yeah. and check their urine to see what's happened, you haven't affected it. So, but obviously, remember now, mechanisms of action, how things work. A lot of times people don't know those things and they find new things that work in new ways. Right. So the doctors, remember, we are also a, a, a matter of what we are taught. Taught, yeah. Just like How you're raised. I always tell people, don't ask your doctors about vitamins or sex. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know anything. They're no, I, they know nothing. Why did they Almost lie to me? nothing. They're taught almost nothing in school and so they know almost nothing. So that's why they're not good in those areas. So the doctors had to be shocked, but I bet a bunch of them wouldn't get some of that... <laughs> Got some of that water. <laughs> yes, they did. Because when you imagine when you're a doctor, you're doing something day in and day out, 10, 15 years, and here come Miracle Man. Here come yeah. Miracle Case, yeah. who you think is going to go under. And then here, they doing better. You damn well want to know what they're doing to well, do they, that. Well, they call me a miracle child, <laughs> even up to today. Wow. Um, my heart um, ejection fraction is only 29% right now while I'm talking with you guys. Wow. Wow. Um, I play basketball. Really? Sunday with my son on Father's Day. And that's the first time I was able to play. <laughs> wow. 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 <laughs> not the screens. Not the screens. He gets some screens. <laughs> and, okay. with, and, and doctors, they'll they tell you with 29%, it's still. Hey, that's not. That, yeah, I mean, that's, that's still wow. play critical. You're, yes. not, you're not out of the woods. Yes. Yeah, that's that's not totally. still compromised, yeah. significantly compromised. But I feel okay. Yeah, you look good. And I drink my, I drink my water. <laughs> I well, drink my how much right do you here. drink? How much do you drink? So you brought them some water. How much do you drink a day? Uh, well, you know, I respect my restri my fluid restriction levels that the doctor. Oh, I, I forgot I, congestive heart failure. You have a fluid restriction because that's a load. Yeah, that's right. No, I respect salt, that. Right? I respect that. But the water that I use helps helps me a lot because um, I don't want to just drink a whole. But actually, the thing is with the water, it's micro clustered, so you really it don't really go into your body the way. Um, regular water go in. Hmm. It goes right directly to your your blood cells, hmm. and it, I think hmm. like um, within about a minute or two, it actually goes to the brain and, and, and dehydrates the brain. It's just unbelievable stuff. Well, check it out, Mac McAllister, <laughs> Port Towns in Washington. Yeah, right. Just put it in the chat room. Wow, they have a a, a Congan water store in Port Town. That's what he calls it up there, Port Town. So he says they yeah, actually. Yeah. So he says he's yeah. going to go take. He's going to go do his investigation <laughs> too. Because you know what? You know, it's certainly okay. Just on the surface, even if you're not sure if you believe it, what are the negatives? Probably only cost of the machine. That's because it. it's certainly I can't figure out any way that it would harm you. Right. In any kind of way. Uh, and, you know, it's interesting when you try things, to try things because you can, it makes a difference. You know, if it's, if it's risky, there are things that people were doing. Right. They're you know, taking mega, mega doses of amino acids, which we said you got to oh, be careful. Wow. Stuff like that. Here is water. Okay, water. Okay. So the only question is if you whether that you believe it or not. I certainly can't imagine any way which it could be toxic or... 
mm-hmm. or damaging. So the only the only issue is the cost okay. and the therapy and getting it out there. But then again, what's so interesting when you hear people talk about sharing it? Now I was looking on here. Now there's different places. Just so you know, uh, Ronald, some there are some places talking about they're trying to start a delivery service. Yes, they they're working on that right now. Well, I can have the UPS man come to my house, grab a couple of gallons, and bring it to you, Mario. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I mean, that's well, that's what they say because they say in the machines, everybody say they look at you. Know? <laughs> Ronald, our chat room is something else. These folks are something else. They are looking right now. So they already they said, well, it's kind of expensive. I see varying prices. That's why I don't know the difference of the machine. That's where it becomes interesting. Because, Ronald, you may know more, but I see machines ranging here in price. Right. There's, there's um, three or four different machines. There's other machines. The problem with the machine that I have at home, it do, it do more than just um, give you drinking water. You oh need, really? Could, I mean, there's a, a hotel here somewhere in Beverly Hills. Use it to clean and sanitize everything. You can also use that. Um, they have beauty water. Oh, so you can bathe in it and try some people. If you were Michael Jackson, <laughs> you had the money. <laughs> she bathes in it every day. Yeah, you drink it, bathe in it. <laughs> and you lucky, baby. huh? Yeah, she bathes in it. <laughs> <laughs> my kids, um, they are, everybody in the house, my house will drink the water because they, of course, they see what it did for me. Ronald, do you mind talking about how much you had to spend? The machine at the time when I bought it, it was um, I think it was thirty nine eighty, three thousand nine hundred eighty dollars. Okay, okay. And you know I didn't have that kind of money, but right. um, they have um, a, a program where you can make installment payments. Okay. You know, is I uh, I guess what was it like eight hundred dollars to start me out, and then two hundred dollars a month. Something and of like course, that. none of your medical benefits covered mm-hmm. a damn thing. No, no, yes. no, my medical benefits didn't But they started to cover holistic therapies. He was so interesting. Yeah. And even Kaiser has one of its benefits now that includes holistic therapy, chiropractic, right. acupuncture, right. because the citizens demanded it. You know, you know, I embraced that consumerism. Ask and ye shall receive. Demand, you get it faster. <laughs> and th- and, and thirty nine eighty. let me just give you an idea what, what that means to me. Thirty nine eighty is like a couple of months of prescription drugs that you have to get that somebody just passes along to you to say, OK, look, we figured out what it is. Some side effects on this. It's going to cost you that much. That's cheap to get the reward. You just. Well, are and me, yeah. now here's sorry. the other thing, it too, is. as machines go as a techie. Now, this is why I talk as a techie, because it's good and it's bad. One thing about techies, we know that once anything comes out of any value, there's a flurry of people who are attempting to clone it. At right. cheaper costs, That's right? And when and, and and when I say that, in a way that works, they're not. Some of them can be unscrupulous, but a lot of people are just trying to make it for cheaper. It's like Weaker the iPad. It's I like, said about right. the iPad. There's no reason why that thing. There should be a version that costs 125. dollars I right. told you, right? Based on what's in it, right. it's markup. Okay. Everybody does markup, right? Yeah, you do so that. I did a look, you guys. For those of you who want to see, you can see my search here. And I first of all, when you search Kangen Water, K A N G E N. A lot of information, but take a look at these different manufacturers. Here's eight hundred and fifty dollars, six hundred twenty-three dollars. Here's a model for one thousand four hundred and twenty dollars. Another model for two thousand. Now, some of this may be having to do, Ronald. I wonder with the amount of water it can process. Exactly. Because if you bathing in it, exactly, you must have the model. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> You don't have a little tabletop. Give no. me a glass at a time. Because I share it. <laughs> yeah, I share yeah. It. You got the one. Yeah, I used to deliver like probably um, 60 gallons um, in a couple of days. Now, what do you mean by you were delivering? Well, my friends, I have friends that, that work at you know, gas station stores. I bring them water and um, let them try it out. So I you got you started. So you were feeling better. <laughs> like a lot of folks, you took it upon yourself to yeah, go deliver yeah, the water. Yes, I did. I delivered the water. Yep. All over um, Orange County. <laughs> man, let's have Tennessee. Man. Now, wait a minute. I can tell you what's going to happen. Let me just tell you what's going to happen now. The word channel is about to hit you. He's already head is spinning. So don't worry about what it means right now. Mm-hmm. He's already going there. I'm telling you that right yeah, now. Yeah, because, you know, first of all, we like to provide people with access yeah. to what we perceive as the evolving airways. Yeah. So these kind of stories. And again, 
Ronald's here talking about a personal thing that happened with him. It's not like he went to get the literature and, and all that. This he he was about to die. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. And now has had a turnaround. And so again, personal experience and I'm sitting here with him. I, there's nothing phony about this man. If he is phony he fooling his stuff out of me. <laughs> that's not his whole vibe and right. energy. Right. And the other thing you notice, too, which is, happens so often, when you find things like this, you feel compelled to share it, don't you? You feel compelled yeah. to right. tell the world, right. come on, try. I am, you know, I'm looking, I'm very interested. I'm very interested and curious because now that I'm a diabetic myself at 55, after I had already lost 40 pounds, came up diabetic. Yeah. So in terms of all that, I'm very curious because to tell you the truth, they don't have a whole lot for you. Even when they have shown in, in the medical models that when you control your diabetes, yeah. that hardening of the arteries goes on. It keeps going. Now, I tell people, from my understanding in medicine, I tell them this. Because your medical treatments don't stop the disease. If you have a disease that makes your blood sugar go up, and I give you a drug whose effect is to make your blood sugar go down, that's not the same as telling your body, whatever was making it go up in the first place, stop that. Right. Now you're balancing right. and a, a disease effect right. with a drug. Same thing for high blood pressure. Right. So something makes your blood pressure go up, so you give a drug that makes the blood pressure go down. It has to stop with major blood. So in all of those therapies, guess what? Right. Something keeps, keeps happening, happening to your body because yeah. you haven't really attacked the disease. Right. That's why you can take all your diabetic medicine wonderfully, wonderful control, and that atherosclerosis is moving at a quick clip. Right. Okay, and you. Right. Okay, so these kinds of things really make people wonder. Oh, all day. Now, I can also tell you that in the holistic world, things like pH ionization, those things are actually discussion items. Edgar Casey had a big issue with carbonated beverages yeah. to the point that many people who are involved with holistic yeah. and healthcare they want to they don't use carbonation they'll use nitrogen or other things because they have read this literature right. and believe it and accept it even though again not accepted within the world of traditional medicine. Well, there's a business component that deals with this when you inject something new. You know, well, you know, because yeah, I'm, I'm not going to even go that in that is. area as much. I just know <laughs> that it. Look, I, I, for me, I'm going like soon as a model of something new <clears> comes <throat> up, it just doesn't. It doesn't take on this viralness that everybody grabs on. It becomes. It disrupts a corporate environment, and that's what this water can do. And, and this type of, this type of innovation has been around with machinery or those who have invented things in the past. But the effect that I'm hearing from this story from multiple people, this is on, it's, it's, it's big. And I can, I can hmm. imagine what the company is going through with the pushback on this. And I'm not trying to take the story to another place. But when the business model comes in here, it absolutely seems to be good for the people. And I've heard you tell me a number of people who actually take it. And I don't want to even quote and drop the names. I'm just saying this right offhand. I'm pretty sure they're having a fight on a, a different side of the wall as it deals with getting what they will call support to have it on the market in some type of way that's cost effective and not affecting the competition. Well, that's why I say we looked at the machines, you know, in terms of the cost. And I, I, I immediately, you know, being a geek, <laughs> yeah, I said, you know, the more, it's going to have something to do with the volume of processing. Power. Right. Because that's what's going to be, have a lot to do with the cost, the amount of water you could affect yeah. in a given amount of time. And to hear that... Uh, Ronald's, <laughs> she's bathing in the water. <laughs> I mean, you must get a real flow. Hey, the chat room is sending it out. A lot of responses to you, Ronald, and people who are going to look at it. A lot of people in support. You know, Brandy, if I if if I had I known you had the Congan water, I might have tasted more. Will you please bring some in? Well, I think you next need week. To, I want to and I want to learn about the delivery services because it does make sense. Imagine as a business person, for example. If the machine has the capacity to quote unquote process X amount of gallons, you can do that as a business, right? Right. So some of the people can do it as a business, even though I must admit I am so moved by the fact that people like Ronald give it away. Ronald's driving, paying his own cash. Well, you know, it, is, it is a business model too. It's, it's okay. a business. Yeah. You know, you um, the like when you the reason you share the water because if that person get a health benefit, they'll probably get a machine. Yes. So I get, you know, a percentage or whatever it is. Well, that's cool. Down. That's nice. 
And that is nice. But that's not, I mean, well, I'm going to say that's not. That's not why you did it. That's right. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. Right. My, my concern is that um, I used to take 16 prescriptions every day. Wow. I used to also do insulin. Huh. And um, you know, and I don't do none of that stuff no more. And uh, I only take basically three medications now. That's aspirin. I still take um, blood pressure. It's like only a ten milligram pill, right? You know, and a little, um, the after little, load reducer for yeah, the heart. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. they something that really. In other words, the heart's a pump, so it's pumping against pressure. You get something right. to relax the pressure on the end right. to let the blood flow. Right. Yeah. Call them after low reducers, all kind of stuff like but, that. But, but the, the remarkable thing that, that hits me, I hear a lot of people, they tell me, oh, the machine costs too much money. But I look at how much that bill that hospital sent me. Oh, Lord, <laughs> I know. <laughs> For one week. We're talking about almost $40,000. I think the ICU runs about three grand a day. See? Three what? to four Nine, grand a day. See what I said? 39 ICU is work. not that much. No, three to four grand a day. <laughs> see what I'm saying? I think a typical admission can run you anywhere, you know, from like $700, $800 a day for nothing just to sit up in there. And I didn't have to pay anything. Somebody paid it. Wow. So, wow. so if it's a way to at least work on that, then I'm, I'm, that's, that's, I'm willing to see that happen. Everybody, <laughs> our guests... Ronald Spears, you know, Ronald, we, whatever we can do, we, you come back, whatever we can do to facilitate you having an audience and getting to that audience, know that we will do that, okay? So okay, when you want to come it. back and do some things, and I personally guarantee you a little web work. If you need some web work, I'll do some web work for you, okay? If you need some things. Yeah, there you go. And, uh, let me I, get, do, I do for my friends. I do, I, do, I do a bunch of web work for people. I do it for them. And look, many things. I do it for them. Let me say this because <laughs> when somebody says this, Thank you, Mama B. And Mama B had a quote about the water. She says, it's great for hangovers. Only you would say that, Mama B. That's okay. <laughs> That's all. Only she would say that, okay. But uh, also, thank you, Vince Cortese. Because remember we said, you, you know, we don't force technology on you. What we do say is go out and meet people because you find yeah. unbelievable stories. And that's what's bringing us together. So technology aside, this is something that's motivating itself without you having to get involved in how you use the technology. You have a viralness that's working with you as you go, you know. So to me, it should be celebrated what you're accomplishing. It's a big deal what you're doing right now. You're affecting people a lot, and you can tell by the chat room. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest, Ronald Spears. <laughs> yes, sir. Wow. Your man. Your man. Now, Lamar, are we going to try to be nice? Because, you know, when you take somebody up, here we go. He's going to sing to you again. I knew it. Can't you like you? Can't you <laughs> hope you like me? Oh, I waited for no, this. I didn't. I didn't. Haven't you noticed? <laughs> now, I'm feeling more bright and breezy. Oh. Because of all the wonderful and new oh, things we <laughs> learned from you here oh. to... Day, everybody, Ronald Spears. Thank God, God bless him. Yes, sir. God bless him. Uh, Thank you, Lord.